Hey friends, so tonight we're going to be making uh, one of the soaps for a wholesale order and I'm super excited. It's a fragrance combo and color combo that they let me basically have just full creative license with. Uh, so fun fact, if you want me to do wholesale orders with you, uh, don't make it hard. Make it so I can pick the colors and fragrances and just get soap and a mold for you and then uh, it'll be a happy partnership. So this is the goat milk going into the uh, lye and oil solution now. Uh, we'll just give it a quick blend to get it to emulsion. Uh, tonight we're going to be doing a one pot wonder, which uh, many fans of the channel know is one of my absolute favorite techniques to do. It's not the most exciting, I feel like, but every time I post a quick little video on Instagram, I have folks telling me that they struggle with it. So um, you're going to get two videos this month. Uh, or at least uh, this time frame because I did two for this wholesale order and I've got more coming up in the spring. Uh, the other big question I usually get is the sleeves I'm wearing. They are from Farmer's Defense. Uh, if you use code Cheeky Goat Soaps when you check out, uh, it'll uh, give you a little 10% discount. So now I'm just scraping off a little bit of leftover batter on my st stick blender here. And then we're going to go ahead and divide out uh, for our colors. Um, the fragrance I'm using for this is a blend of pretty well-behaved um, fragrances, so I don't mind adding it right to my batter. Normally, if you've watched the channel, you know I don't ever say to do this. Uh, however, I know how this one behaves pretty well, and I'm confident that I can get away with what I'm looking to do. Uh, spoiler alert, I do get away with it. So now I'm just going to go ahead and actually divide out the soap. I kind of make jokes about this every single time. Uh, there's, there's the right way to do this and then there's my way to do this. Uh, the right way to do this would be to measure the entire batch and then divide it by how many colors you're going to do. Uh, I can't be bothered to do that. So I just kind of pour them all into my little uh, cups here and then uh, <laughs> go back through and figure out which one is roughly the smallest and make them all even. You don't have to do it this way, you should do it the right way, which is to measure it and divide out equally. I just, for some reason, I, I don't know, I, I'm religiously opposed to it or something. Um, the other thing that I will mention is that I'm kind of pouring this over a spatula. That's just kind of to help with air bubbles. It's not the end of the world if your soap has air bubbles, it's not gonna you change the composition of the soap or how useful it is to wash with. But for me personally, I feel that it's, uh, not appealing in the end soap. So I do try to pour this over my spatula to try to reduce the turbulence. Um, so basically what happens is if you are just pouring it into the bottom of the little pitcher, the air gets trapped as the soap hits the bottom and then bounces back up again. And that's what I'm trying to avoid. I'm trying to avoid that turbulence catching more air bubbles in my soap. Uh, so now I'm going to just pour them and try to get an equal amount. You'll note that I'm pouring from the side of these spouts. Uh, if you are going to be lazy like I am and not measure and divide equally, then being smart about how you're doing it and pouring from the sides will save you having some uncolored batter kind of mar your design when you're pouring your final soap. Also, if you are interested, I did put a link to all of these pictures. Um, I got most of them on Amazon. You can get them elsewhere. Most of the big suppliers sell them. I find Amazon usually has some better prices, so I've linked that uh, in the description below. So now that I'm mostly satisfied with how much each pitcher has, I'm gonna do our colorants. Uh, the first is my titanium dioxide. This is from Brambleberry. It's the oil-based one. I prefer oil-based to water. Uh, there's, you can do the water if you want. I don't like glycerin rivers in my soap. It's a cosmetic thing. Again, it doesn't do anything to the soap, but I just don't like the way it looks. Uh, so I avoid it by using um, oil-based. So like I said, I just, I prefer the oil-based. Um, you can get it from other vendors. I just happen to get it from Brambleberry because I order from them probably too much. Uh, this is, uh, I had a tiger and titanium dioxide mixed together. I wanted pastel colors. It's spring. Spring always makes me think of pastels. Uh, I'm not sure why. I live in Florida. Uh, we don't really get spring. It just gets hot again. 
Um, but if you are from other states, besides Florida, where it's eternal summer, the color palette seems to always be pastels. So for this one, since it's kind of a citrusy, bright fragrance and very Florida, uh, and it's fragrance to me at least with all the citrus, I decided to also do some kind of pale uh, sunset colors, so to speak. Let me clean this up real quick because I can't stand when I make a mess and I'm really good at it. Anyway, so on to the next color. The next color is uh, Material Girl with Titanium Dioxide. Again, same thing, going for the pastels uh, because it's just the kind of look I was going for in the soap. If you have been to Florida or uh, visited Florida or other places that have uh, nice sunsets, uh, this color palette will make sense to you. That's what I was kind of basing it off of was that real pretty pinky orangey colors that we get in our sky uh, right as the sun's going down in twilight. Uh, so I'm pretty pleased that I managed to get those colors pretty darn close. So last but not least is our blue. This is uh, blue green mica from uh, Micas and More with titanium dioxide. It's kind of a really pretty turquoise and it's quickly become one of my favorite colors. Uh, my friend um, the Mad Soper actually told me about this color and this company, um, and I have just used it almost religiously since she was kind enough to share it with me. So thank you to her for that. Also, congratulations to her. She just opened up her first storefront, and I'm just really happy for her, and I hope it all takes off because it couldn't happen to a better and kinder human. Anyway, back to soap. So now I've got all of my colorants together, and mixed, so now we're trying to put it in our pitcher. I, one of the things people ask me about is how do I get a nice feathery one pot wonder? And I'm telling you right now, a lot of it's this pitcher. Uh, there's a link to this pitcher in the description below. It is lightweight, it holds quite a bit, and it lets me sling the soap quickly. So the key to a good one pot wonder, you can see some bubbles, that's annoying. The key to a good one pot wonder is having everything smoothly flow into the mold. So you'll know I'm pouring everything down the wall because I am again trying to reduce bubbles. I keep a little bit of the color because I want to do the top. So again, I'm pouring down the wall, the mold into the pitcher. Anyway, back to the pitcher. This pitcher holds a bunch of soap. Um, my batches are roughly five pounds. It's a little, a little over that, but roughly five pounds. So you want to have something that you can easily hold in your hand that you can shuffle back and forth rather quickly that will let you pour the soap smoothly. So that's why I like this pitcher. I've used it pretty much religiously. I've got a couple of them now um, since we all learned how to do one pot wonders in the soap challenge club a few years ago. And it's just the best. So if you are struggling with this technique, that would be my advice, is to go and get that pitcher. Um, again, it's linked in the description below. So the other thing to consider when you are pouring a One Pot Wonder is that the colors that you pour in order are going to be in opposite order inside the mold. So if this is something that you struggle with like I do, um, just remember whatever goes in first comes out first. So in my case, I did plan for that and I made sure that my white was in last because it's gonna go in the mold first. So we finish with the blue on top. Uh, this means that I usually have to keep a little bit more of the last color I pour in, so the, the bottom color, to make sure I have enough for my top. So in this case, it didn't really matter. There wasn't a specific design I was going for, like the watermelon I made or beach ones that I've made before. Uh, but it can make a difference if you are trying to make something specific. So the tool you can kind of see on the screen now is a Cheshire Cat uh, angling tool. It's from Custom Craft Tools. It comes with very nice metal screws that I promptly lost. Uh, so I'm using a wooden skewer to secure the mold at the angle I want. Um, it's a great tool, it's lightweight, they're easy to clean. I highly recommend it, it's one of my favorite tools. Uh, you don't have to have something fancy like this for this technique, it does help, uh, but a rolled up towel works just as well. So now 
I'm gonna start on the edge of the mold and I'm just gonna kind of go back and forth kind of quickly. Even if it's the start of the same color, you'll see that I'll continue making the same motion over and over again. Uh, because as we get into other colors kind of pouring through, you don't know necessarily what's coming through on the other side. So just keep the same motion, keep repeating, and that feathering motion, or sorry, the repetitive motion will make sure that you have nice feathers. The faster and more narrow your movements are, the closer together your feathers are going to be. So I continue doing this until I'm starting to kind of get backflow in the mold, and then I'm gonna stop for a second and angle the mold up a little bit more. Be careful if you're doing this with either this tool or another tool that you don't adjust your uh, mold too quickly because then you're gonna have a weird spot where the, the angle changes and you're gonna be able to see that in the actual soap pattern. So you have to really pay attention when you're doing this to make sure that that doesn't go too suddenly one way or the other. The same thing uh, will be said as I continue forward and I kind of get it towards the end uh, where I'll continue to pour from the one side and make sure that it's a nice even uh, tempo and then pushing over from the same side so you don't get that weird shelf in the middle of your design. So again, same thing again, just for back to the same back and forth motion. Now it looks like it's only blue here, but underneath there's other colors happening. So just keep on keeping it on the same side and pushing it back and forth. So again, I'm going to stop there and tilt the mold back a little bit more and then repeat the same thing. Uh, there was an air bubble that I'm popping with my little stick. So now we're almost at the end of where it should be, but I'm not gonna totally make it flat just yet. I've got a little bit more angle because again, I'm trying to be careful that I don't lose the nice design by getting it straight too quickly. So we're gonna continue pushing on this side and just letting it push over naturally. And then once I'm content that I've got it most out of the mold and I cannot really truly fit anymore, I'll move it on to my actual studio bench. So we're about there now. I'm actually overflowing the mold a little bit. Oh, that's exactly what I said not to do, but you know, just do as I say, not as I do. Um, so I'm gonna scoop a little bit of that back where it belongs. And then we're gonna go ahead and finish this top. So even though I let it kind of settle over kind of hard, I'm still gonna let it push over. I'm gonna pour it on the same side to kind of fill in. I'm not gonna suddenly just dump all this in the middle of the loaf of soap. I'm gonna let it continue to push from the one side. Now that I've got most of it out, I'm gonna go ahead and transfer it to my studio bench here. Now, I'm not sure if you remembered, uh, but I did, that I had all the little bits saved in the containers off to the side. So I saved those on purpose and I uh, will do the top with them. I try to do kind of a simple top, usually with my one pot wonders. The interior of the bar is really the most interesting part and I don't wanna take away from that. It's a beautiful design that should be featured. And I find that sometimes I'll do a crazy top and then the interior is a bit lost. So I clean up my edges and then I'm gonna go ahead and get the other pictures to do my top with. The, the top, again, doesn't really matter. Like it, it's one of those things where I think as a soap maker, we all sort of agonize over them because it's the part that we can all see. But I've never once had a customer be like, oh, if only the top was prettier. Uh, but it does help uh, for pictures on Instagram. So uh, here we are. So for this, I'm just kind of lazily making a little uh, S shape with each of the colors. Uh, then I will drag my skewer through them. Um, this is just me playing around. There's no rhyme or reason. It's just me having a good time with soap, uh, which was one of the things that I was really thankful for with this order because the company that ordered this wholesale uh, group of soaps for me, it gave me just full reign to do whatever kind of weird things I wanted and let me pick out colors and smells, which I was very thankful for. That isn't a normal thing uh, in my experience with a lot of wholesale orders. They're very fussy and picky, and I understand that. Like, they've got their vision of what they want. Uh, but when I have a wholesale client that lets me do whatever weird things that I think work within the confines that they've given me, uh, it's just really fun and it gives me a chance to just play with soap again. 
So thank you for that. And I can't uh, wait to see how all the bars do for them um, at, their, at their shop. So I'm just trickling the last little bits of the soap into this and then I'll go ahead and swirl it. I'm slightly superstitious. I have a favorite chopstick that I've had now for I can't even tell you how many years uh, that I use to swirl my soaps with. Um, I'm going to clean up the edges and then I'm going to get the chopstick, but I'll just have to clean it out again. Um, the other kind of silly thing that I'm doing here is I'm just trying to get a little bit of extra soap off of the mold uh, and into a cup. I purposely make extra soap in every batch. Uh, this is mostly because I like to have samples from every batch that I make. Um, part of it is that's how I have these little sample bars for everybody. The other part of it is that's a good way for me to keep track of batches. I always keep a sample back uh, for at least a year of all the soaps that I make so I can make sure that everything is you know, good and fine and not having any issues. So here I'm just swirling it, kind of a feathery back and forth design. I almost left it like this and I was like, no, let's, let's just keep on going. Let's just swirl the rest of it. Um, and again, this is my favorite chopstick that I've had for many, many years that I love to pieces. So that's the entirety of the design there. I'm just gonna finish cleaning this up and then we'll get to cutting. And again, I wish I was this fast. Okay, on to cutting the soap. So speaking of custom craft tools, this cutter is also from them. Uh, it is the extra tall and wide one that uh, my best friend Roxanne had made for me. Um, here's the first cut, looks very nice. Um, it's, it's a great cutter, I love this cutter. Uh, it, it does still tend to kind of ding the top, which is why I'm turning this sideways. Uh, so if you have ordered it and you're you know still getting a little ding on the top, just turn it over sideways, it's what it's meant to be really cut for. So again, here's um, some more of these cut bars. It turned out beautiful. I was really happy with this design. Um, again, One Pot Wonder is just one of the simplest and quickest ways to make a really beautiful soap. It's very appealing, very fast. So from here on out, I will let this play out in real time. I've had a lot of you commenting that for some reason you want to see each and every bar cut. Uh, which kind of cracks me up, but uh, I appreciate that you want to see what it looks like. Uh, these are cut ever so slightly larger than my normal um, because she had ordered a certain amount of each design and uh, I'd rather give her a little bit more weight for her uh, bars of soap than, uh, you know, give her her money's worth. So uh, after this, I will just go ahead and put on some music and uh, thank you for watching.